Even the most revealing and transparent concept, nakedness has many layers and implications to it. Thunberger, in his essay Ways of Seeing, considered nudity as a kind of disguise for women, in order to display a certain role in European oil paintings. Another interesting perspective towards European paintings is suggested by Jill Burke, mainly concentrating on the impact of European voyages by shaping new ideas. In her essay, Burke mentions four areas of focus. First is Adam and Eve, as a way of understanding the development of mankind and human potential. Second, the perception of nakedness as something exotic. First point is connected with the increased presence of black Africans as slaves in Italian cities, with an analysis of Pisanello's Lagreria in this context. And lastly, the link with the Portuguese voyages to Africa and descriptions of battling tribesmen as a means of interpreting Antonio de Paleolo's Battle of Naked Men. Now let me introduce the author. Jill Burke, a senior lecturer in the History of Art at the University of Edinburgh, is a remarkable expert in Italian Renaissance art. Her engaging and innovative research mainly focuses on discovering and understanding the human body in Italy and Europe between 15th to 16th centuries. After finishing monograph rethinking the Italian Renaissance nude, now she is working on the concept of how people will comprehend the beauty of their own or other bodies through naked images. Previously, she launched projects working on visual arts and social identity. After archival research, Burke published her first monograph, Changing Patterns, Social Identity and the Visual Arts in Renaissance Florence, emphasizing identity and patronage. We all know the story of Adam and Eve and how they were banished from heaven. The most common narratives in the European paintings depicted Adam and Eve in heaven, naked in their natural habitat, where their nakedness was a prelapsarian state. Clothing becomes necessary when shame enters heaven. European voyages, on the other hand, brought new perspectives towards nakedness. Here we can see how the context changes with the portrayal of Adam and Eve still naked, but this time they are busy with earthly duties, which was not common in European practices earlier. The iconography of the couple laboring naked seems to be linked with their presence at the beginning of famous people's circles, which gained its popularity from the early Quattrocento. Here we can see a couple of famous artworks of the same subject. So the question is how can we account for the stripping of this famous couple? Burke notes the importance of showing the couple's historical existence as the progenitors of all humanity. One of the famous examples is on the Arco Foscari in the Doge's Palace in Venice. Here Adam and Eve serve as a reminder of human desire to create both order and disorder. Thus, when a Renaissance viewer saw Adam and Eve naked, they already have implications towards the next part of the story, their nakedness signifying the potential to be clothed, meaning create and prosper. The following perspective is stressed on the classical text, primarily Vitruvius's on architecture. These texts mostly agree on mankind's original state being basically animal-like, with no clothing or proper language. Another text written by Giannato Manetti on the dignity and excellence of humans argues that people are different from beasts partly because of their ability to craft things. Basically, the whole point is that their nakedness becomes a metaphor for the potential to be clothed, meaning the potential of human growth. Now let's understand what the Quattrocento term means. It's an Italian term that means 400, for the years belonging to the 15th century. It was one of the most important periods of European art and culture. It started in Italy, and it is the first phase of the movement known as Renaissance. Suggestively, during the Quattrocento, the location of terrestrial paradise, the place where Eden could be found on Earth, shifted from Asia to Sub-Saharan Africa, and according to Alessandro Scafi, the earliest evidence for the change can be found on a map of the first half of 1400s by the Venetian cartographer Alberti da Virga. The Garden of Eden is depicted at the southernmost tip of Africa with the symbol of two concentric rings, from which emerge the four rivers mentioned in Genesis. Next is a medieval European map of the world by Giovanni di Paolo, the creation of the world. The picture presents a vision of paradise to the left-hand side of the panel, God points at earthly globe. The simplified map in the middle shows Africa at the top, with Europe to the right and Asia to the left. At the very summit of the map is the mountain of the moon, believed by some to be the location in Africa where Eden was located. Adam and Eve are shown being expelled naked by a naked angel. The garden's effulgent flora symbolize the pure and sinless state of man before the fall. In the 15th century, 
Western world was looking at the East through the misappropriation of exaggerated Eastern cultural traits and practices to build and maintain the East as an exotic and uncivilized place of beauty and terror. We even can use the term Orientalism to refer to this phenomenon. Generally patronizing Western attitudes towards Middle Eastern, Asian and North African societies. As Said claims in his work Orientalism, the West essentializes these societies as static and undeveloped ones, whereas the Western society is counted as developed, rational, flexible and superior. The article's next area of focus is how the increased presence of black Africans in Italian cities has influenced the perception of nakedness during the Renaissance. Not only brought by Portuguese voyagers, but also traded by Genoese and Venetian merchants, African slaves were common during this period. There is an account of 250 slaves brought in 1444 who were brought naked. These were clothed and baptized by their European owners to save them from paganism and beastly way of life. Most slaves were young women in their teens who worked in urban areas doing domestic service, deemed to be sexually available for their masters. Early 15th century Italians saw nakedness as a common attribute in the Africans. The Africans were seen as more animal than Europeans. Some descriptions include that the Africans lived like beasts and were incapable of understanding the Catholic faith. With this context in mind, we can begin analyzing Pisanelia's Luxuria, which is one of the handful drawings dating from the 15th century of a female nude model. Her look with flat noses and woolly hair matches the description of Africans by Europeans. Her animality is stressed as she seems to be melting with the animal skin she is laying on. Given the contextual and visual evidence, the contemporary audience would have recognized her as hailing from Sub-Saharan Africa. She is presented not as an idealized nude, but as an exotic animal for the pleasure of the audience. One of the most important artworks of the Renaissance period was Battle of Naked Men by Antonio del Pualeolo, and this painting became an inception point for painting naked male bodies in the early 15th century. The puzzle behind this painting is that there are no literary or pictorial sources which could be a possible inspiration for the painter. If we look to the details of this painting, we can see that entirely naked male figures are using various types of weapons to kill each other, and circular shields randomly thrown on the floor show that no one is trying to protect himself. Some art critics see this as heroism, others say they are fictitious. In the early 14th century, Florentine merchants had invested in the Portuguese expeditions to the Atlantic coast of Africa. Antonio had some connections with patriots, banks, and merchants at that time, which were the main source of news about Africa, its people, and traditions. This could possibly be the source of inspiration for Antonio to paint that painting. There are also similarities between Antonio's work and Olvisca Damasto's writing who traveled to the south of Senegal River and wrote about what he saw. He describes the people of the Africa as very black, tall and weak, their bodies well formed, and the whole country green, full of trees and fertile. He says they went around naked and were typically warlike. He describes the types of weapons that they used and says that they were very brave, were not afraid of killing each other and of death. So all of this is very well described in the painting as well, and this could be another inspiration for Antonio to paint. Besides the similarities between these two works, there are at least four main differences. First, the axes from the Battle of Naked Men are absent in Cadamasco's writing. Second, the chain held by the main figures is also missing in Cadamasco's work. Third, the grapevines in the background do not grow in that part of Africa because of temperature. Finally, the male faces are not stereotypically African. Antonio and other painters of the Renaissance period would paint African people as naked bodies who were dancing, battling, or doing other beast-like activities. These people were deprived of personality, they were simply exotic, and this is why Europeans started to see Africans as simply blacks or others, and this Peter Manson suggests, as a function of European discourse, those who were not Europeans were barbarians, and one barbarian was more or less like another, quote-unquote. This very briefly describes the situation of the Renaissance period, and we should take into consideration this fact while discussing the paintings of the 15th and 16th centuries. Certainly, we cannot simply avoid the fact that nude paintings became mainstream in Europe after the voyages of discovery of the tales of naked natives. 
Filippo Levin's observation about Victorian colonial attitudes to nakedness suggests that the non-Western body, with its absence of shame and its apparent normalizing or incomprehension of nudity as nudity, created a safe space for observing naked bodies belonging to nameless, over-sexualized people to whom shame could not allegedly attach. Exoticizing the nude perhaps allowed the burden of decorum to be lifted from the artist and the audience. The naked body has no fixed significance, but was a sign of something yet to come, just like in Adam and Eve's case when we waited for them to be clothed. Burke wanted to emphasize the importance of naked non-Europeans during the European voyages by bringing new meaning to nakedness and its role in defining humanity.